Welcome to the Proto Art. Be sure to like and subscribe for new content. Before you start plotting out and getting into the uh, multiple colors which are Axie Draw, there's a few things you'll need. That includes three quarters, some spacers, the Axie Draw itself, the board that it comes with, markers, pens or pencils or whatever you want to use to draw with. Once you have everything connected as far as the cables go, I used my spacers which are about two inches in width uh, to line it up properly. So I put that between the board and the Axie Draw itself and that made my board parallel so I knew it wasn't uh, uneven and I didn't have to fiddle with it later. And after I have that properly lined up, I just marked it with the Sharpies so I knew where everything needed to go. I have my markers ready and lined up in the order I want them to print and I had put a piece of tape or you can use a piece of plastic which I actually used in this I think I uh, put a piece of plastic in the corner so every time I'm swapping out my markers and I need to test the uh, distance it lands on the plastic and not the paper itself and doesn't leave a mark I use the quarters stacked up on top of each other so every time you swap out your your uh, markers it lands on the quarters and you know it's about the right distance it needs to be so with that all ready to go I hop into the software side of it and that's going to be a little bit more in depth but you see me here I just loosely let the markers touch the uh, the quarters when I'm lining it up tighten it so it's not overly tightened you'll know if you go too far because the motor won't move anyway here's the software side of it what's up everybody welcome back to the proto art so here is a walkthrough kind of of how you print multiple colors using axi draw I didn't see any tutorials on this so I made my own um, and with the background and screen printing, it kind of lined up perfectly uh, as to how you would set your stuff up. So if you're not familiar, just a quick breakdown of screen printing. Uh, if you make any image, it ends up on a transparency like this, which you've seen this design worn by me a couple times. Uh, it's just a solid black color. So when you're actually printing, it doesn't matter what color you're using uh, when you're making your transparency because it's going to be solid black. From that transparency that gets transferred onto something called a screen like this which is just they have like metal frame ones you'll see ones with wood and it, there's an emulsion which is that green color you see on there um and your image basically is the part that gets washed out of the emulsion on the screen and from there you can put whatever color paint you want and you create your screen so if you're doing a solid color it's a poster I had made. I don't know how well you can see that. This is one color. Um, so all the white in that area is the part where the emulsion is out of your screen. And I know this will make sense in a second. And here's a two color uh, print there. So oops. the reason I bring that up is it's the same process, the same thinking when you're doing it for Axie Draw. Uh, so this is a multiple color design. It's like six colors. So I have to break it up into six different layers. So same premise. So when screen printing, each color has to be on its own screen. Same thing with Axie Draw when you're making your image. Each color has to be on its own layer. So with that being said, you can see the design in the background is this little parrot. Um, I had to take my JPEG images. Again, these were all in color initially. And in Photoshop, I kind of had to separate each color into its own thing and then turn it into a vector. So I've had a, a previous video as to how to kind of do that. Um, but I went out ahead and bought this other program called Image Vectorizer. So you can do something like this in Illustrator where it tries to trace your image and turn it into a vector. But this is just like a really straightforward thing because I'm not too familiar with Illustrator, honestly. But basically, you take your image, whatever it may be, so let's just pick this outline of the bird. This is a JPEG. You drop it into this program. I'm not sponsored by any of these companies, by the way. This is just me trying to educate you guys because I didn't see a video on how to do this. So I had to kind of figure it out as I went. So you take your bitmap image, whether, that, whether it's a PNG, JPEG, uh, bitmap, or whatever other format that's not a vector, you throw it into this program. You press, or you can fiddle with some settings. You can adjust like the threshold, contrast, invert it. Um, so anything that you see black is what will be turned into a vector. Or you can, you know, leave it as is. You can rotate it. A uh, bunch of stuff like that. Once you're happy with the settings, there you just press vectorize, 
and it's going to go through your image and turn it into a vector. And again, there's more settings you can fiddle with. This might take a minute because I'm running a few different programs right now. There you go. So you can fine tune the settings in here. Uh, you can, it says, it says suppress speckles. I'm not quite sure what that is, but uh, the main thing I wanted to focus on was rotating it and uh, making the output DPI 300. So I can press update at the very bottom here. And I'll update my image with that new information I put in because the reason I'm putting it sideways is when I'm uh, making this into a, um, like almost the transparency. Um, I wanted to line up with my platen. That board that you put the paper on is called a platen. Same thing with screen printing. If you're printing on a shirt, they have platens. Those are the boards you lay your t-shirts out that they print on. Now that it's all done, I would just say export vector. And that's gonna give me the option to where I wanna save my uh, new vector SVG file to. So once you have your vector files all saved, you can import them into Inkscape. So by default, this doesn't have this frame uh, like like this. I had to actually make this in Photoshop. So I made two different documents. One was a nine by 12, the other was a seven by 10. The reason I chose these sizes is because the seven by 10 is from your mixed media, mi mixed media paper, sorry, <laughs> that you would buy uh, by Canson. And when you tear it out, the perforated edges are seven by 10. Now, even with that being said, I still wouldn't put my image to the very border of those of my frame. So let me zoom in a little bit so you can see. And I'll load up the reference file. When I say reference file, it's literally just the JPEG. It's not a vector. I just want to see the full colors, how they're supposed to be laid out and kind of give me an idea of with the placement. So when I import my my uh, reference file, I can kind of line it up within the borders so I know it's not going to go too far to either side. And since I'm printing on the uh, 7 by 10, I know I needed to make some adjustments here. So let me hide that reference. So my 7 by 10, you can see in my example here, is this little border, this little mini rectangle here. All right. Uh, it's not exact. So if I, I do make this uh, downloadable, don't knock me too much. It's just kind of a good rough estimate as to how it lays out on my platen, how I have it set up. So if you saw from my the little video in a second here, um, <laughs> it's going to, uh, I'll kind of break that down. So yeah, so once you have your image in here, um, sorry, the uh, 9 by 12 is a large watercolor paper that you can also buy um, that fits on the platen board. So that's why I have these two squares. So with that in mind, I know I need to have my image inside of this framework. So the actual border are these little squares up here, right? But my framing, if you follow this uh, template and you have it with inside of that frame, at least, you know, uh, I don't know what part of the world you're in. So I would, I want to use inches and centimeters, but just gauging it by looking at it you kind of want to have like a little space. That's the best way I can put it um, between the border. You don't want to have it exactly at the edge, give it some bleed. Um, so once you know you have that, so I drop my reference in here. So just like screen printing, I, I'm gonna keep going back to that because that's what I know. You want to line your transparency up on your shirt or whatever you're printing on and have that as your guide. So then you use your screens so with your image on your screen, I have stuff to show you today. <laughs> you line your screen up according to your transparency. So you're making adjustments, you're moving it around, you're lining up your screen to the transparency. And once that's ready, you know when you put the board down and you print, it's gonna line up exactly where it needs to be. So same premise with this. So I was going through with all my layers imported, I labeled them how I knew what colors I want to use and just kind of lined it up according to my image. Now they weren't spot on, which I could take more time and make adjustments, but I wanted to make this video fairly short. I have my images lined up to my reference here and zooming in, you can see they're not exactly spot on as there are some gaps here and there, but that's fine. I don't need it to be super exact for this example. And especially with this image, it's not uh, super detailed. It's uh, kind of blocky and bulky. But if you're making something with like pen, 
like a little sharpie or a pencil. Of course, you want to take your time to make sure it's more it's lined up more efficiently. Uh, since I'm using like broader markers, it ended up working out just fine because it gave me a little bit of play and leeway. So once everything's properly aligned, sorry, I'm moving stuff out the way here. I have so many props today, but like uh, Gallagher or uh, Carrot Top. <laughs> once you have everything aligned you're going to go into your extensions and then the axi draw control all right from here there's not too much you're going to mess with you can kind of keep it at the default for the most part the only things that you want to kind of pay attention to if you look through their manual um is the timing under that timing tab so the default is this 30 by 75 uh, according to their uh, little manual you can depending on the speed i mean uh, uh, depending on what material you're using so if it's a wide tip marker it can go uh with your drawing speed to 90 and the uh the pen up speed to 100 so you want it to go fast because you don't want to leave large blotchy marks from the markers so you want to you know adjust accordingly to what you're uh what you're using to actually draw so i would look into that a little bit and experiment a little bit but once you're satisfied with that the next thing you're going to do is use the rise up and turn off motor just to make sure your your axi draw is at its uh, operating the, the beginning stage where it needs to operate. So all the way to the left, all the way back. So it's all zeroed out. You put the toggle pin up, toggle pin down option. So you choose this little button here and you want to see the motor drop down. And uh, how I explained to you is for me, I had three quarters stacked on top of each other. And basically when I have that and I toggle it down, the pen or whatever I'm using will touch the edge of the quarters. That's when I know it's about the right height I need it to be. So I'll tighten it up just enough. If you put it too much, the motor, the servo motor will actually seize up. So when you're drawing, you'll notice like it takes a long time for it to actually go down. It will raise up fast, but it takes a long time for it to go down. So you want to make sure you don't tighten it up too much just enough so it holds it in place. And then once you have that properly tightened and you know at the right height, um, also side note, I, um, uh, before I forget to mention, uh, I don't know, I'll mention it again in the video, but I have a piece of plastic where the pen actually goes down so it doesn't keep touching the paper and leaving marks. Uh, you can use various items to do that uh, as like a buffer. And once all that's done, um, before you plot, understand it's not going to print each individual color. You have to do that manually. So what you'll need to do is toggle off. Let me close this real fast. You're going to toggle off the parts you don't want to print. So it's going to go in order. So printing downwards, right? So maybe there's a better way to do this. Again, I didn't see any videos. So I'm just making this one for you guys. Um, so I wanted this to be my starting point. So I would toggle that so that's the only one visible. Anything visible is what it's going to print. So same thing with the screen printing. You know, you're layering your, how you're layering your colors matters. And the very last color you put down, this is usually the uh, black color for the outlines and stuff. So once I have my layer chosen and everything else toggled off, I can hit plot and it will start plotting that layer, the individual color that I choose. So I went and did this for each individual color. So once it was done, it would go back to its home position and, and stop. And then I would toggle the next color, swap out my markers, and then hit the little play button. And again, it would go and do its little thing and plot out the colors. So uh, that's the software side of it. And you know, once you're done, then you're done. But I'll dive right into the video and show you the Axi Draw at work. Here we go. So diving back into the hardware side of it, I have the quarter stacked in the corner as well as a piece of plastic on the paper itself. And I put a marker in the Axi Draw, allowing it to drop freely until it touches the quarters, tightening up the screw so everything's in place properly. Overly tightening it, yeah, you'll probably encounter some issues with the servo motor freezing up and it won't lower or raise at the proper speed it needs to, so make sure you don't overly tighten it. Once that's all set in place, I can begin the process of uh, plotting the actual artwork. You will need to repeat this step between each color and each layer, so be prepared to do so. 
So I sped this up a little bit because it does take quite some time. I think total it took around 30 minutes for it to finish the plotting with the six different colors. But, you know, it was a pretty fun process to watch it go. Um, I did. While doing this, I kind of figured uh, I'd mention hopefully in future releases uh, with this company that they'll put out some kind of built-in spacer with it because it just seemed like such an easy thing to do uh, to add just even like little wooden blocks or something cheap, you know, don't have to go all out and manufacture pieces of metal. You could do it really cheaply, but having to do this myself was kind of a pain, honestly. Uh, but it saved a lot of time in the long run, having the proper distance already set with these little spacers in place and marking it off where it should go. But once that was all in place and everything lined up, it was a pretty smooth process. As I mentioned, you do have to keep swapping out the uh, markers for each layer uh, or color, however many you're using. For me, I chose six for this uh, drawing. And it's the same thing of putting the quarters there, stacking it up, lowering the axi draw so it touches the quarters, lowering it so it touches the paper once you try the up-down motion. And once it's all ready to go, you just hit plot and continue with each individual layer. But yeah, it's a pretty fun experience. If you haven't used this thing before, I'd say give it a go. It's not the cheapest thing, I'm not gonna lie. It's a little pricey, so if you're not planning to use use this uh for long term and multiple projects i probably i don't know if i'd invest in this it's it's a fun thing to try if you are an artist and you want to make some unique pieces of art and you want to be able to replicate it you know I'd, I'd say give it a go i know there are a lot of options out there on the market some vary in price and uh some come pre-assembled some you have to assemble it yourself so it'd be kind of fun just to you know try it yourself and maybe a diy version if you don't want to invest in this yourself um the one difference I did do, I should mention, uh, for this particular art is I used the uh, cross hatching. You can access this by going into the effects tab the same way you would with the Axie Draw controls uh, and toggling uh, the a few different settings. So you can have it so it hatch fills uh, where the spacing is at three, the angle zero, the connect nearby ends is toggled off. That will give you like straight uh, lines uh, sideways or you can change the angle and toggle the uh, connecting lines on or off and that'll give you like a little squiggly effect or if you have the cross hatching turned on then it will go and make multiple passes so it gives you like a crisscross kind of effect so depending on what you're using whether it's markers or pens this can look either very flattering or it might look a little messy in the end result for me, I didn't choose to go with the cross hatching. I left that toggled off, but I did have the spacing at three, the angle at 45, and I had the connecting ends toggled on and the range set to three and the distance at 1.0. And that gave me a pretty good, uh, pretty good end result there, I, I thought, where it makes a second pass, but it doesn't look overly worked. Uh, again, it really depends on what your medium is. If you're using markers, pens, or pencils, it'll vary. Um, the second thing I noticed was when I used a mechanical pencil, it just ran down on the lit a lot quicker. So I ended up having to kind of uh, <laughs> grab the machine so it didn't move out of place, but kind of angle it back a little bit and hurry up and click the lead and then place it gently back down so it continued plotting. The only reason I did that is because if I hit the pause button on the side, it didn't happen every time, but it happened enough where it was super frustrating. Uh, it wouldn't continue where it left off. It's, I don't know if it was a software issue on my end or what happened, but it would have to start all the way over and I didn't want to do that. So this is the only quick workaround that I found was to literally grab the uh, Axie draw and kind of gently tilt it back and quickly t um, click the top of the pencil so it, it more lead fed to it. But here was the end result, and I thought it turned out pretty good. It allowed me enough wiggle room if I wanted to add some uh, details to it. Anyway, that was it. Hopefully you guys enjoyed, and we'll hit that like and subscribe button, and don't miss out on any new videos. I'll talk to you guys soon. Stay safe out there.